Welcome to Mother Earth Lunar Baby. I'm Dana Katad, Certified Doula, and today we're going to talk about diaper rash and poop. So uh, about a couple weeks ago, uh, the baby, she's now 11 months old, has this lovely oral fixation with licking the shopping cart handles. So she brought herself home a nice little GI virus. So it's been about a week changing eight to nine poopy diapers on her. And then she shared it with her three-year-old brother. So I spent about a week dealing with him having a GI virus as well. So towards the end of that two weeks, my poor husband came home from work and I pretty much fake cried, that kind of fake cry that every mama knows what I'm talking about. And I buried myself in his chest and I pretty much went, don't make me do it. joke around here is that as soon as I get my kids potty trained, it's going to be time to change my in-laws. And then as soon as I'm done changing their diapers, it's going to be time to change his diaper. And I don't get paid for this. I don't know how I signed myself up for a lifetime and changing poopy diapers for free, but I really needed to rethink that. So I decided that for our next installment that we would talk about alternative ways to help your babies with diaper rash. So Harper Morgan's diaper rash was so significant that actually most of my homemade or natural remedies were not working. So I actually ended up with this last GI virus having to go with that whole triple medicine thing I've never used in my life. So I had to go get the desitin and the A&D ointment and what's the other thing? <sighs> Some kind of calcium liquid heartburn medicine and you blend it all together and you will never be able to use your beater for your blender on food again because you will never get that amount of petroleum off of there it is like permanently on there so now I have like this beater that is only going to be for this desitin mixture and it worked to an extent but it didn't really help all that either it was pretty bad so what I normally do when she has a diaper rash is I will make a solution for her, a tea solution, and make some homemade wipes. This is also something that I highly recommend to my um, pregnant mamas for postpartum. So if you were my doula client, I would actually give you a solution, uh, a tea uh, to make a solution with, and you could put it in your peri bottle or you can make homemade wipes with it, and or you can sit in the bath with it. Now with my children, often I will just, because I make that in bulk, use that, but for today's demo, I just grabbed some lavender and some calendula. Both of them are, for the most part, pretty soothing. You don't have to worry about them being super astringent. And just remember, if you're going to get some over-the-counter herbal sits bath to use for this rather than just getting loose herbs, that you don't want to make it as strong for your baby as you would for yourself. So... The reason for that is, is that they have new skin. So you don't want to overexpose them to some really strong tea. So a lot of times what I will end up doing, I've done it with my son before. I have just thrown my hands in the air and been like, I don't know what to do for this diaper rash. I've tried everything. Nothing is working. And then I go, wait, I have tools for this. <laughs> Why am I not implementing my perineum tools for my poor son's perineum. So it started off with me just giving them the sitz baths. So if they had a diaper rash, I would make the tea, I would make it a weaker solution, and then I would put it in the bath with them. And so then it was even more diluted by the bath water. And that was working, but then sometimes it would work, but it wouldn't last or it wouldn't completely heal it in one bath. And then we were going back to using the wipes and the wipes were really irritating them. So it, occurred to me with my daughter, with Harper Morgan, a couple weeks ago, why am I not using wipes? Every time I went to wipe her with a disposable wipe, she was freaking out. The wipe was abrasive on her. I wouldn't think that it would hurt her, the solution, but something was up. So I made the tea, and I made it weaker than normal, and I cut up some receiving blankets, because ladies, I know you've got five million receiving blankets 
That's the number one gift you got. Everybody got you a three pack of receiving blankets and something else. So you're sitting there with this drawer, maybe two, maybe three drawers full of receiving blankets going, what in the world am I ever going to do with all these receiving blankets? You're going to cut them out for birth cloths and you're going to cut them out for diaper wipes and you're going to find ways to upcycle and recycle those blankets. And one of those ways I will show you in the demo today is that you can cut them up and soak them in the tea and then use that for your wipe instead. So it's a, it'll be a nice softer fabric for them. Those receiving blanket, uh, the actual fabric is thin enough that you can do what you need to do without having a really thick fabric. And then depending on how many receiving blankets you have, you can throw them out or you can wash them and reuse them, especially if your baby's not on solids, then there really shouldn't be an issue with having to clean all that if you're not the mama who wants to cloth diaper and cloth wipe and, and deal with that whole mess. I myself have had three kids. I have so many receiving blankets and then I have friends who are hand-me-downing more receiving blankets that I pretty much just cut them up and I throw them out. To me, I've recycled it, I've given it a whole nother purpose, and I'm going from there and I'm okay with that. So uh, I'll see you in a sec and I'm gonna show you how I put together these wipes. Just know that what I did um, for the demo video was made a whole bin. And if you're gonna make a whole bin, I would recommend you store that bin in the refrigerator that way the tea doesn't go bad and then only take out a little bit every day that you need and warm it up to room temperature or use a wipe warmer. I have a wipe warmer. So I can take out a few at a time, stick them in the wipe warmer and then as they start to go low, I'll stick some cold ones underneath it so they start warming. And that way the tea doesn't go bad on the wipes before I've had a chance to use them all. Or you can make the tea, store it in a jar in the fridge and then soak the wipes as you go. So you can do that as well. That way um, you're not taking up as much space in your fridge. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye.